Well, hello again, everybody, and welcome to another episode. And we're back in the big chair today. It is a very big chair, isn't it? And I've got a very unusual little lens to show you from Seven Artisans. It's this one, the 28mm f5.6. Now, this lens is unusual in two ways. First, because it's an f5.6 maximum aperture, and that is very unusual. Um, generally, modern lenses go to f well, certainly to f3.5, usually to f2.8, and very often beyond that as well. But this little fellow goes only to f5.6, so that's one reason why it's unusual. Another reason why it's unusual is because of its appearance. It has this wonderful appearance that makes it look like an older lens from the 1930s or 1940s, 1950s, that kind of era. And it harks back to some of the great rangefinder lenses of the past. Lenses like this f 250 mm Summitar from Leica that's on the Leica 2 here with complete with focusing tab or this Industar 22 another collapsible and that's on the Leica 3 here and that again that's got a focusing tab and both those lenses are 1940s lenses so this one wherever it's got to this one really is harking back to an earlier era its design is unusual as well it's got this tapered body i'll give you a more closer look in a moment but it's got this tapered body it's widest at the point where it meets the camera and it tapers to a quite a narrow uh, front section there and it's got this lovely little focusing tab just like the old lenses did. It's got a little focusing tab here so you can find it really easily with your finger when you've got the camera to your eye like this. Very, very simple focusing. It's also got a very short focus throw of about a third of a turn. Thereabouts, maybe a bit more, about a third of a turn. So this is a very unusual lens indeed. Shall we have a closer look? Ah, there's one thing more I've got to tell you. It's only available in Leica M mount. And, of course, it goes straight onto all the Leica M cameras, right from the M3 of the late 1950s, right up until the most recent digital rangefinders from Leica, which still have that Leica M mount. But you don't have to have a Leica M camera to shoot it. This lens of course will adapt to any mirrorless body as i'm doing here it's sitting on my sony a7 here the adapter is very small because it's a rangefinder lens it's made for leica m rangefinders so it does present a very small package now let's have a closer look so there's our little seven artisans rangefinder lens and there's the tapered design that i was talking about and I'm not sure that there were any older older lenses that looked exactly like that, but it's certainly in the spirit of the older lenses. The size of the front is pretty much on a par with what the older lenses were. Here's the Industar 22 for comparison. And you can see that they're about the same. If I bring them to the same distance, they're about the same size at the front here. Here's the little focusing tab, and that's very very easy and simple to find when you've got the camera to your eye and that's a real boon for fast focusing not that you need to do too much focusing with this lens it really isn't a lens that you need to put too much work into focusing but we'll come to that shortly there is as you can see a depth of field scale uh, here we've got the aperture ring uh, sorry, we've got the focus ring next, so that's from infinity to one meter. It goes only to one meter, just like the old rangefinder lenses of the past. 
and finally we've got the aperture ring here it's got two little wings with um, a ridged grip on them so you can find them nice and easy when you've got the camera to your eye and that runs from f5.6 right the way around to f22 now this is a very sharp lens and with that reasonably slow maximum aperture of f5.6 it's probably not surprising as i'm sure you know the uh, more you close your aperture down the more sharp the sharper your lens will become and as this has a maximum of f5.6 it's pretty sharp right from the outset so it's very very sharp wide open it really is incredibly sharp and it records a tremendous amount of detail right from the start right from wide open as i say it's also got deep focus from wide open uh, there's very little shallow depth of field with this lens there's very little blur from this lens there is some blur it will give you some separation if if you're close to your subject but the minimum focus distance is only one meter just like some of the older rangefinder lenses just like both of these where's it gone where's me like a three gun there it is just like both of these old uh, lenses here the Leica lens is three foot or one meter the Indostar 22 is also three foot or one meter the Jupiter 8 the Indostar 50 pretty much all the rangefinder lenses I can think of have that fairly long minimum focus distance so that's another bar to getting blur it's even less opportunity to make background blur so it really is a case of deep focus with this lens really at whatever aperture you're at obviously if you're at 5.6 you're going to get less deep focus than if you're at 22 but generally speaking this is a lens with pretty deep focus and the field has lots and lots of depth and most of the shot is going to be in focus whichever aperture you choose really if you stop it down past f5.6 of course this lens becomes bitingly sharp it really is hard to describe how sharp it becomes you get very very deep depth of field everything is in focus if you especially if you go to f11 or beyond pretty much everything is in focus in fact looking at the depth of field scale here if i set the um focus to 1.2 meters in fact i'll show you over here so i've got the 1.2 meter mark by the f11 mark uh, and so we've got from 1.2 meters in focus now if we go around to the other side where the other f11 mark is then we'll see that we're very nearly at infinity and if we just turn that a touch more gosh in fact we've gone past infinity there so so yeah at f11 everything from about a meter to infinity is in focus and of course if you go past f11 to f16 or even f22 no problem on a mirrorless camera on a digital camera because you can just whack up the iso to compensate then of course things get incredibly sharp and the entire field is in focus all the way from a meter right out to infinity probably less than a meter and maybe even behind you as well that's how sharp this thing is it's just incredible and the, the shots it makes when the aperture is stopped down to f11 past f11 or so they're like a mobile phone shot you know the um, very tiny sensors in mobile phones give you very very deep focus that's what this lens will do everything is in focus it gives very nice color it's a little on the cool side but actually i don't mind that i do like cool colors and uh, i'm not keen on lenses that 
are very warm in their presentation of colour. I'd much prefer a lens that airs on the cool side. If that's not to your taste, then of course you can easily make adjustments in camera or if you shoot the image, you can make adjustments in post. Very, very simple to do. It's got very strong contrast, but it does drop in direct sunlight. Um, it doesn't do it too readily, but the uh, you get a hood with this lens, a little hood from Seven Artisans, which just pops on the front there. And that is needed, especially if you're shooting in strong sunlight or anywhere with any direct light sources. If that light source should catch the glass at just the wrong angle, it will wash out either just a portion of the shot or the entire shot will be washed out and you won't really be able to easily bring that back. So it is best to use a hood. Um, make sure you don't shoot in areas where there's a lot of direct light because uh, it will wash out. But use the hood and you should be fine. There is a tiny bit of vignetting with this lens, which I was surprised to see because it's a very slow aperture. But there is a tiny bit of vignetting. I actually don't mind that because it focuses attention on the subject. It's not like shooting, say, a, a vintage 1.2 or a 1.4 lens where you do tend to get very heavily darkened corners. This one isn't like that. It's just a touch of darkening, which sort of centers attention right onto your subject, wherever that should happen to be in the frame. Now, this is an engaging and unusual little lens. It really is quite a likeable little thing. But I must admit, I initially found it a little bit hard to place. I mean, after all, you can use any 28 millimeter lens and stop it down to f5.6. Uh, or beyond there if you just want a lens that will, um, you know, you can do some hyperfocal shooting with. However, after I'd used this lens a bit more and got familiar with it and what it can do and what it can't do, I understood what this lens is. This lens is a hyperfocal lens. The purpose of this lens is to set a small aperture so that you get a very deep depth of field so that you're ready to shoot. It's ideal for street work or anywhere really that you don't have time to focus or you don't want to think too much about focusing. It's a traditional rangefinder, hyperfocal distancing. Uh, rather hyperfocal focusing lens and that's what it's for and looked at like that it really makes sense after all remember if you stop down to f11 you've got pretty much the entire visual field from a meter right out to infinity in focus before you and in that sense this is a very traditional rangefinder lens and i really like it for that it's harking back to those, those old lenses. It's saying, look, we don't need anything particularly flash or particularly fancy to get good images on the street or wherever else. All we need is a well-made lens with good optics that doesn't necessarily need big wide aperture values. And that's what this lens is. You can use any other 28 lens, 28 mil lens to do that. But then again, if I was using an SLR lens now on my mirrorless camera here, the adapter would make the whole thing much larger. Look how small this package is. It's a very light, very small, not quite pocketable, but not far off package. A really nice little combination. And of course, if you're shooting on a Leica M, camera this is much cheaper than any Leica lens I can think of so a lovely little lens a really nice little thing something that I really warmed to it's got a classic look it's got great optics 
and it's got that really handy focusing tab as well so you can make minor adjustments and they will only need to be minor adjustments if at all uh, when you're shooting with this lens so there we are a very very nice little traditional rangefinder lens so I guess that's it from me for today. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and ring that bell before you go. Thank you very, very much. Thank you from the bottom of my heart to all the people who have subscribed, people who've subscribed recently, people who've subscribed some time ago and stayed with the channel as it's developed. Many, many thanks to you all. Many thanks also go to the patrons who make possible what this channel can do. Many, many thanks to all patrons, patrons who've just joined us, patrons who've been with us for ages and ages and who've supported the channel since it was that big. Many, many thanks to all of you and that is a deep and heartfelt thank you. So that's it from me for now. And I will see you next time for some more xenography.